kia tātou, nā mai hari mai um, koutou ki tēnei uh, wāhanga tua tōru uh, mō tēnei ahi ahi um, and in the session of our um, our Matariki session this afternoon. Um, I'd like to welcome you all here. I'll just go through a little bit of a, um, as the facilitator, my name is Lovie Collier, um, the representative for Te Whanganui Ataras. Um, sorry, I don't have my, I'll just keep going. Um, so our format for this afternoon, I'm just going to lead us into our karakia to start us off for this afternoon. And then I will um, get everyone to introduce themselves on the chat line. And then we'll just have and then anything else that you want to share will come up on the chat. Feeling a little bit nervous with this, so please be with me. Thank you. Um, we have two other members that will be helping me facilitate this afternoon. We have Tedda and Virginia. This is quite interesting because this is the first time for me for doing that before we introduce our beautiful guest speaker for the, our afternoon session. So, Kati Mataho here, Karakia. If I can fatai a no, no tenere, if I can mow my harakinga tonga. Tukuiho, ngā maunga, ngā awa, ngā moana, ngā rākau, ngā manu. Hei, tiri tiri ngā tātou kato, o tātou wairo te hangatangata kotahi. Kia mahi taki ai, me te au hau, tino pai, kia mahi taki ai. Mo te au hau, tino pai. I don't know, um, many. Uh, now, Karakia, more Andy Fraser, if anybody knows that's something we, we learned together many years ago for Matariki. And I think that Karakia is available also online to everybody. So, no more Um And before we get into our first part, I'd just like to welcome all those people that are coming on now. Kura koutou. And I'll just let our other two um, panelists introduce themselves. Uh, kia ora koutou, no mai hara mai ki tēnei wā hanga um, te rā atahua nei, ko Virginia he tātaku ingoa, ko au te tahi kaiako uh, o te kura kaupapa Māori o Otea Poti, ko au te māngau o te kupenga rangatahi i runga i te reo areare. Kia ora. So I'd like to warmly welcome um, Kian to this afternoon session. <laughs> Kia ora, tēnā tātou. Uh, ko Kiani a hau, Kiani Matata Sipu tōku ingoa, he uri a hau noi humātau, uh, he uri uh, a hau mō ngā kaiako. Uh, my mama and my grandmother were both kaiako. Um, uh, my mama is still a kaiako, and so um, I'm very honoured to actually come and kōrero with you all today about Matariki. Um, I've got a bit of a presentation to share with you, so just bear with me while I share my screen. So my mahi uh, for the last well, 15 years has been as a journalist, as a photographer, as a researcher, um, but I've also been a, a huge champion and huge advocate for Matariki. And through my mahi, I've been able to organise um, events for my marae, for Tāmaki Makoto, for the Auckland Matariki Festival, have been part of um, columns to talk about Matariki and, and tell people what Matariki is and share information around Matariki, and also um, have been a huge champion for the, the Matariki uh, public holiday to be recognised here um, in Aotearoa. And so uh, for those who um, may not have had a lot of experience with Matariki or um, maybe are just starting to get to know a little bit more about what Matariki is, last year I, I wrote uh, a piece about Matariki to talk about what Matariki represents to me 
in and around Mātauranga Māori, in and around uh, another one of my passions, which is um, our atua wahine and wahine in general. And if you can hear that beeping, my neighbour's driving his truck down his driveway backwards, so aroha mai for all the beeps while I'm going through the corridor. Um, so Matariki, when the Matariki star cluster rises on the horizon, she laments those lost. Salty tears of Hinemoana flow between her karanga, cleansing her of the year gone. From the flesh of Papatuanuku at Kurawaka, she reflects on old worlds and new. And like the tips of Mahuika's fingers, her aspirations are set alight as she looks in celebration towards the year ahead. This is what I wrote last year to describe what Matariki means to me and how my whanau celebrate Matariki each year in connection with our atua wahine. So Matariki, uh, as many will know, is the Māori name for the Pleiades star cluster. There's a kōrero tukuiho in Te Ao Māori about Matariki, and it's to do with our atua Tāwhiri Mātia, who is our god of the wind. And the story goes that Tāwhiri Mātia was so upset that Tāne Mahuta separated his parents, Ranginui and Papatuanuku, that he ripped out his eyes, he crushed them up, and he threw them into the sky. And hence we get Ngā Mata o Te Ariki, or Matariki. Matariki marks a new year or a new season, and it's not uh, necessarily the star cluster for every rohe across Aotearoa that marks the new year or the new season. For me, in my rohe, it's Puanga, which is known as Raigul and Orion, and when the rise of Puanga happens, that's when my rohe celebrate the new year. But Matariki is also a great star cluster for us to celebrate the, the new year. Matariki is a time for reflection. It's a time for rest. It happens in the middle of what we call in Te Ao Pākehā our winter season, um, which is a time for us to come together as a whānau, a time to slow down, and a time for planning ahead. It's a really good time to wānanga. And when we look at Matariki, Matariki and the, the stars of Matariki uh, represent something different in our taiao. They represent something in, in our environment. And depending on how brightly a, sha, a particular star shines determines the success of what that star represents for the season ahead. So what does that actually mean? We sometimes talk about Matariki as a seven star cluster and more recently Rangi Mātāmua has been talking about it as a nine star cluster and one day I asked Matoriri Atamākiha how many stars are in the Matariki cluster Mato and he said there's a thousand stars up there so don't stress out over whether it's seven or whether it's nine but I like to talk about the nine stars of Matariki and each fetu has a different name and it also has a different thing that it represents. So Matariki is representative of reflection, hope, and the connection to our taiao. Pohutukawa connects with those who have passed on. Waiti talks or reflects our bodies of freshwater and the kai that we can find in freshwater. And Waita ties us to the ocean and the kai that's within our ocean. Waipunarangi is associated with the rain. Tupuanuku is for the kai or the food that grows within the soil. And tupuarangi is for the food that grows up in our trees, in particular our berries. Ururangi is the star that's associated with the winds. And Hiwaiterangi, one of my favorite stars, is our wishing star. And it's the star that ties into our hopes and our dreams for the year ahead. And so when we think about what these stars represent, when we look up at the Matariki star cluster, if, for example, Tupuanuku is the brightest star shining in the cluster, then the tohu or the sign is that for the following year, the crops will be really good for growing in the soil. If that star is very dull in the star cluster, then the tohu is, it's probably not going to be a good year for growing crops. And so those are some of the ways that we can read the Matariki stars in, in regards to the year ahead. There are lots of things that we can do with our tamariki at all different ages to reflect and represent and celebrate matariki. And I always start with our fetu pohutukawa because it is one of the most important fetu in the matariki star cluster in terms of what matariki represents. This photo here is me and my nanny. And my nanny was a kindergarten teacher her whole life. She uh, ran Kingsden Kindergarten for 30 plus years, and she did a lot of mahi in and around uh, resurging Mātauranga Māori and working with Papa Tuanuku within the kindergarten space. And so 
for me, when we look at what we can do with our tamariki, when we look at pōhutukawa, it talks about a time for remembrance. So we encourage or should encourage our tamariki to talk about, sing about, bring in photos of those that they have lost. It might be whānau members or friends that they've lost in the year gone by, or it might be from years ahead. You can bring in those photos, you can uh, turn them into fetu, so you can photocopy them and put them and the kids can make them into stars and you can hang them in your classroom. Uh, you can share stories about who those people were, talk about their names, their favourite food, what they did for mahi and favourite memories with them. Because Matariki is a time to reflect, it's a really good time to get our tamariki to share about their lives over the last year. Maybe they've had new babies join their whānau. So we can talk about that. We can share about what, who those babies are, what their names are, what they do with those babies. We can acknowledge achievements in the past year. At my marae, every matariki, we have a celebratory lunch and we give out awards. And it might be just awards for you did the best karanga this year or you did really good at your homework this year. And we acknowledge all the different people on our whānau and that can happen with all the tamariki in the classroom. We can recognise improvements over the last year and then we can also talk about all the stink things that happened, reflect on all the stink things that happened, write them down, put it in a box and maybe if you're allowed you might want to burn it or you might just want to bury it and it's a way for us to reflect on the year gone and put that away so that we can start planning for the year ahead. Uh, Matariki is an opportunity to really explore our creativity and there are endless options for Matariki art projects. You can draw, paint, stencil, you can stamp, you can sculpt. There's plenty of waiata out there to learn uh, for Matariki and uh, there are there are waiata that we can learn with our tamariki and there's the makarena version of waiti, waita, waipunarangi, which some of you may know. If you don't, it's on YouTube. Um, but you can also look at some of our Māori musicians like Maisie Rika, who last year wrote an entire album dedicated to the whetu of matariki and they can be playing in your classroom throughout the next month or so. We can be drawing stars, we can be uh, drawing or, or creating sculptures of our whānau, our loved ones. Uh, we can be talking and, and drawing about matariki feasts because you always got to have kai. Um, or we can bring in those kōrero tukuiho of tāwhiri mātia and get our tamariki to draw uh, their versions of what tāwhiri mātia looks like. Um, and then there's also activities that we can do at, a, at an older level. Um, and these are just different ways that we can reflect the different fetu, the different stars of Matariki. Waiti, for example, being the fetu of our fresh water and the kai that lives within it, you could visit your local river or stream, count the eels, measure the eels, draw the eels, talk about hinaki, what were the traditional ways that we caught eels. You could make a hinaki in your class. For Tupuanuku, you can talk about what grows within the soil, what climate does particular kai grow in, how was it harvested. You can learn a karakia for kai. All of these things relate to the Tupuanuku fetu. And then for Waita, we can look at Hinemuana, look at Tangaroa. We can talk about the stories of Hinemuana and Tangaroa. We can create collaborative and collective art pieces uh, from things that we may have collected from the moana. And uh, if you're uh, teaching older students, you might want to start talking about rising sea levels, about climate change. You might be able to go out and visit the beach and observe the taiao. It's really important that uh, we incorporate observation as part of our kōrero with matariki because that is what our tupuna always used to do, observe, go and sit out there, what did they see, what did they hear, what kind of birds, what kind of shells. And if you do it over a number of years and keep going back to the same spot, you can see the different changes that are happening in and around your environment. Hiwai uh, Te Rangi is the fetu, as I said, my favourite fetu because it's an opportunity for us to plan for the year ahead. And it's for our tamariki to be able to dream and for our tamariki to be able to uh, write down their aspirations or to draw their aspirations. Last year when we were in lockdown, uh, my kōtiro, who is now three, her and I uh, made this uh, tapatoru here. So we made this out of the kōrari from the harakeke, which is the seed pods from the flax bush. We pulled it out because they're all dry at this time of the year and tied them together with flax, with harakeke, and uh, put it in our backyard. 
And we talked about what our dreams and our wishes were, bearing in mind she was still two at the time. And we went out into the garden. We got natural resources. We got um, oh, we got some plants. We got some flowers. We got some pine cones. And we put our wishes into those things. We had a corridor to them and we hung them up uh, on this Korari pyramid. And it became a bit of a wishing tree, a wishing rako. And this is something you can easily make for your classroom, for your centre, for your kura. And you can have every tamariki come in. They could write on a piece of paper what their dreams, hopes and aspirations are. And they could tie them to the korari, tie them to the rako. Um, and you can use all natural resources to pull it all together. You literally go out into the garden and it's all free. And so this is one way that we can uh, plan for the year ahead while connecting with our environment under the umbrella of Matariki with the Fetu Hiwai Te Rangi. The biggest and best thing that we can do for Matariki is have a kai. <laughs> Everything has to come back to kai. But kai tahi is a true reflection of what Matariki means and represents. Matariki is an opportunity for us to come together, to come together as a fano, as a school kura fano, as a classroom fano, and it's an opportunity for us to invite families into the classroom for a shared meal together. It's an opportunity for us to connect with tamariki and have them make kai, have them serve their parents, um, have them grow something out of the garden and make it for the class and to all come together. And it's an opportunity for you to get some really good interaction, some really good time to spend with those families, with those parents outside of reports or outside of those types of um, events that happen at Kura. So that was just my really brief uh, korero about what matariki is and how we can incorporate matariki into our uh, curriculum in lots of different ways um, for all different ages using mostly natural resources that you can find out in our taiao every single day. So tēnā koutou. Could uh, um, can people just sort of slightly be with my my internet connections going on and off for some unknown reason? But thank you, uh, for for time or ten day corridor, monga um, elf wa tamaniki nohi nohi. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I totally enjoyed it. Um, and I just want to share with everybody um a, a little bit of my perspective of matariki because I suppose I grew up in that generation where it really wasn't as celebrated as we like to. So my first um, my first knowledge of matariki was during the early 60s. Now I'm showing my age. So um, I'm, I'm with my uncles and we've just finished um, doing some fencing up this past Parihaka. And anyway, my two uncles, my mother's brothers, were linesmen for the, at that time for the electricity board. And anyway, we're off on a ride up to Mount Egmont or Taranaki and Egmont in those days, but Taranaki and we were going up there and my uncle's brothers were talking about Matariki itself and I'd never heard of it. I really never heard of it and, and they asked my cousin and I and it was freezing when we went up there and, you know, here's us two girls in our ugly Roman sandals and our T-shirt dresses going up for a ride with our uncles on it and, and listening to our uncles talk about Matariki and what it meant to them. And they talked about past nannies and uncles that had passed away, but never so much about the harvesting thing, but more about people who had passed. And we get there and it's freezing cold. No kites. My cousin and I, we're seven and eight. We're with our two uncles, like this, shivering. And they're giving us a, they're showing us how to read the sky. And, you know, when you're that age, it's like slightly oblivious to you. But I definitely recall how important for one of my uncles that, you know, Māori should bring it back then, that it should be celebrated, remembering the past and rebuilding the relationships. Because I think at the time, they were talking about the state of our whānau as a whānau and bringing us together and learning about these things. And one of the distinctive things that I do remember about is then my uncle Laurie telling us we couldn't see it with the naked eye. He said you can barely see it with the naked eye. But here on the West Coast, you have a really good chance of seeing it 
I, I knew that. And that was really quite interesting. I always remember that um, and being able to see and reading the skies to see it. So that was my first and last introduction 16, nearly 60 odd years ago to much. Tariki. So when it sort of really was regenerated like 30 years ago, I was really quite excited, really, really excited. And I says, and when my children and my mokopuna asked me about it, I used to just tell them the story. This is what we did and this is what I knew. And everything that I learned from now, from that point on, from the 90s onwards, yeah, all learning is good learning and all things Māori, you know. Will benefit you. So I think we're going to have a little bit of a, a Q and A later on, but I'm just going to ask our other two members if they'd like to share anything about their first memories of Matariki and follow up on to what Kiam was talking about, because you've had some wonderful ideas and sharing of your personal knowledge with us. So we'll just have a, a little corridor from our other two members before we get into our Q and A, because we're a bit ahead of time. So. Virginia Tira, would you like to share a little bit about when you first learnt about Matariki? Oh, kia ora koutou. Um, well, kawai, te wā tuatahi, was when I got into the education sector as a kaiafina um, and as a, yeah, as a kaiako, I, that's when I heard about it, was through when I was worked back in the, um, returned to working in um, could I? And with my kids, which was only like my oldest is 32 and my youngest is 21. So just in those times when they were little, um, just through the education system, that's the first time I ever heard about it. I never heard about it when I was growing up and I grew up in Little Atoria. So I didn't hear about it growing up. Um, which is kind of sad, but that's what it was, and that's how it was. And it's not like that anymore, which is miharo, hey, because this is the time we're now celebrating it, and it's it's been recognised, and it's been recognised by our, by everybody that this is important. Um, I love that we did have, we had our maramataka, we had our korero, we had all those things that our tipuna did, and I love the fact that when the sky was the brightest with the stars was when there was wānanga, you know, because they wānanga, they did their wānanga right through the night, through the day, if all day, all day, all day, all night stuff, um, because there were different parts of those of the day and night that things were recalled, um, when things were reflected on, um, and the fact that they used they used the stars for education. For, mm. to educate our young ones, our pipi. Um, being a 51-year-old new beginning teacher with pipi pau pau, it's, um, I have come to this realisation that just in the last couple of years as a kayako with our little babies, that that was why our kauro, our karaua and our kuia were at the teachers while the mums and dads did the mahi with our pipi because they just loved and they let the babies be who they needed to be in their moment and they gave them safety to be in their moment um, and Matariki reminds us about to be in the moment and allow each one of us to be in our moment because if we don't allow each other to be in our own moment then what happens is we get lost as we get uh, go along on our journey, because then you have to regurgitate, you have to go back and try and reheal, and so um, and that's hard as an adult, being one of those adults who did a lot of healing and is still healing, um, and I know everyone does healing, but it's it's just, it's just I love how now with Maramataka and with the realization of how we reflect those things. I love that idea of putting the stink things. <laughs> Ngā mea kino, kai roto i tētahi ipu and either tahu or berry. I love it because it means I have dealt with you, you have done, I don't need you anymore and you will not hold me back no more. Hey, that's beautiful. I never even thought of that and I'm, I'm looking at doing something that with my baby. Um, about that, anything, even if it's just the time, what may be a, a tiny little thing to other people could be the biggest thing for a wee one. Oh, I lost my favourite shoe. Oh, pai, draw that shoe, put it in, 
it's okay. I can move on now. You know, we forget that our babies, what is a small thing that looks like to us as adults, is a huge thing. And it's about letting them be in their moment. And um, so they can move on from that moment, whether it be good or bad um, or good or, you know, yeah. So that's what I love about Matsuriki. And I love that it's being recognized now because it does help us to remember, let each other be in their moment, allow each other to be in their moment. And when they're ready, they will move on from that moment. But let's give each other safe spaces, safe time to move from that moment. So that's what I love about Matariki. And that's what it means for me now that I understand and know about Matariki. Namahe. Hmm. Um, kia ora tata. Just to, um, so Te Reo Māori me ona tikanga was, is my first and foremost language. Um, my kui a kaumatua brought me up since I was a baby and he mahanga tāku. Um, and growing up on a marae was something that I I basically took for granted, never knew anything else but marae tikanga, marae ahuatanga, marae wairua. But um, as I grew older and going through kura, kohanga reo, whare kura, whare wānanga, matariki was always there. But knowing how far matariki can take you as, as we are now to as we are growing and healing um, has a huge impact on my life as a kayako. Um, I've always wanted to be a teacher. I've always wanted to teach somewhere. But now my, my whole life and um, guiding is, is through kohanga reo. Um, bringing it back into perspective for the way that we teach our tamariki or have something in common with our babies is um, koto ahua, koto wairua. And the way that we look at our stories are totally different in every area. Um, some have got the stories of the seven kites. Some have got stories about the seven fishes and the stars and the uh, something else and you know and adapting to all those stories which still come out to be the same thing um, I know that the celebration of Matariki has become stronger throughout the years um, Māori Tanga is becoming stronger through Matariki within these years um, as we have it now Waitaha is doing their uh, whaka vengaho uh, kapahaka today and um, it's, a, it's a really big thing up here for that as well. So bringing it into ahuatanga ako, how we teach our babies, is that knowing that our tamariki, uh, our kinesthetic babies, are all hands-on them. Um, how do we do that for them? We do it through our, um, our wayata. Tamariki love entertainment. They love performing. They love everything that just vibrant um, that's vibrant for them but at the same time for kayako we need to know where that balance is for us as well um, that balance between kayako and tamariki we're two peas in the pot we can't actually separate them so acknowledging our babies also needs to be acknowledged by us as kayakos for each other um, there is a huge difference between uh, Māori medium and mainstream medium where Technically and wholeheartedly, we want the same thing for all our babies. ECE mm -hmm. teachers are trying the best that they can with the knowledge that they have. However, there's still a lot more that we um, that that they are wanting to learn. However, nobody's trying to help them. Um, and this is where I'm really grateful for you, um, Ehua Moto Moto Mahitahi, to share this knowledge um, in a practical manner and of manner that um, our mainstream kayako can understand. And for that reason, um, I can see all these messages coming through and they're like, oh my God, that is such a great idea. Oh my life, you know. And this is something that um, early childhood education sector has always needed, you know. Um, they needed that, that far no tangata kind of thing happening, whether it's in front of you, a tinana, or whether it's in front of you in webinar. That the, um, that the sharing of these matauranga will be available for both sides. Um, there's no need for us to be feeling that, oh, yeah, me Māori tātou ka noho Māori mai ngā kōrero, um, ana mā, mā te taha auraki rātou e kimi tō rātou aki here here. 
that's not how I feel. I feel that if it's good for us, it's good for mainstream as well. And they feel the same way too. Um, um, I'm a huge advocate to give and to share with our mainstream whānau, um, especially early childhood, because they they have mokopuna that are Māori, and they want to give them that our Māori. However, it's hard for them to have that understanding if they're out in a rural place or whether they're out in town or, you know, their locations are different. And some iwi are there for us to, um, to tap into, but some are finding it hard. To, to bring that forward. So thank you so much for sharing that with our, um, with our mainstream whānau. Um, kai is a good thing, but there's a, lot of, um, there's a lot of other hidden stuff happening with kai. There's relationship building, there's conversation around the peeling potatoes, there's, there's um, <laughs> connections being made with auntie that's saying that, oh, hey, babe, what are you doing? And I was like, oh, I don't want to peel potatoes. <laughs> you know, if you get to hear what people don't like and what people do like, and those sorts of things don't really happen in these days now because we've got a machine that can peel 100 potatoes <laughs> in our whare now. So, you know, what does that mean for us? We... We try and find something that can bring us all back together and it's at the table, which is great. But I think my challenge to us now um, as kayako Māori is to invite our kayako auraki, to invite our um, early childhood centres, kindergartens, privates, home-based, play centres, hospital-based thingies, you know, invite them into your whare to bring them in for that kai because there's so much that they can offer as much as we're offering they've got that as well um Nureira, matariki for me means building those networks um matariki means oh, how do i say it? matariki is not only the eyes of of the kaitiaki or tafiri matia it also means the eyes of those on the ground Ne? Um, he ariki watato tamariki, he ariki hoki mato. Ne? We're also those ariki. Um, not talking about idolization, we're just talking about that whole world view of where we can see everything as Māori and then how we can bring in our mainstream as Māori, as Bano. So we've got a teina to a kind of setting in that whare. So when I move on, my mainstream lete is going to be able to share that with the other ones that are coming through. That's that whole picky, picky i te taumata mo tātou katoa. Um, so, yeah, that's my whero to, to our um, kayako Māori out there. Um, get a hold of somebody and your, I'm sure somebody knows somebody in kindergarten or ECE to bring them into your whare and have dinner with you or with your, um, with your setting. Nō reira, kia koe te tuahine ngā mihi nui. And thank you really much. And, and yeah, just reflecting back and that whole inclusiveness with our world and its fragile state, uh, we need to be really more inclusive. And it's about celebrating and working with each other together because we're not necessarily in the same waka. But yes, um, and talking about that inclusiveness and what we're learning and our journey going and moving forward. And that just helps build those relationships. And that's what we're doing in terms of the matariki. One of the things our schools just recently um, done, we've been actually looking at other countries that view Rangi Nui as part, a major part of their New Year celebrations. And quite a few of our Asian cultures do the same. So we were quite impressed with that at our school. And one other thing we've just recently done, I hope there's a lot of people here from Wellington, but at Kmart and Purirua, all the kites are up to help celebrate Matariki. So all the schools have been building and making kites. So I hope people get to go along and view those. Um, just in a moment, we're going to go into our Q&A um, session uh, according to my time things, but thank you, boy, beautiful corridor, um, Kōrua. And it's quite funny just reflecting down on that little story. 30 years on, uh, we had a whānau who back home and just before my uncles passed away and we were talking about wānanga, about whakapapa and the state of our whānau and the state of te reo. 
And my uncle goes, you know, because somebody did bring it up. Oh, my And my uncle looked at me and he says, Well, you should know. What did I tell you when you were little? And I'm like, This, I don't know. All I can remember is I was freezing cold in the back of your ugly <laughs> truck, <laughs> trying to remember. And I'm going, uh, What did you say? <laughs> but yeah. No, that was my first and earliest memory. And and sometimes, you know, for some of us, like my older siblings and my older family members, sometimes they sort of like, I don't know, we didn't do that, we didn't do this, and I went, but we are now. And let's just be a part of what's happening now to move our young ones forward. So, yeah, some of us. And those people out there, there are quite a few of them that never celebrate and done it. But, hey. We've been on this journey for the last 20 odd years now. Let's celebrate it, embrace it, and move on all together. And I just love it. I just love doing my Sadiqa celebrations. And um, yes, so we're going to go into our QA session. I'm just waiting. I've got a message up here. And we do have um, three questions. Yes. Oh, thank you so much for sharing. Um, and we have in this in this section. So we've got three questions that we would like to ask, or if anybody else is going to ask up. So I'll just wait for Jess to just put us through. If people are out there or anybody else has a question for Kian. Just personal question if you want to do, but we do have three major questions we would like to ask you, but just asking those that are on here, if you've got any other questions that you would like to ask the panelists, and I'll just bring up my chat. Hmm. Okay. Um, okay, so... Um, I don't know if our girls have seen it. No, can. Okay. Could you provide two examples? And I've just heard one of these examples. Two examples for celebrating Matariki with infants under two year olds. Anything in particular for the babies? Okay, that was one of the questions. So, um, so every, well, my baby's now three and her whole life we've celebrated Matariki and uh, at preschool, she goes to preschool with my mum. So me, family services, Mangere East, give them a little shout out. Even though there's a kohanga reo next door, I've got to drive her all the way to Mangere East to my mama. <laughs> However, <laughs> um, you know, I think the thing that my nanny taught me most was everything that comes from Papa Tuanaku is safe for our tamariki, our pepe, our mukupuna uh, to engage with and to play with. Uh, in the early childhood space and so you can bring in all of the corridor that I talked about earlier for our PP um, in the exact same way so if we were talking about waita and, and the kai that we can get from the moana you might give that PP a power shell to play with they might have a power shell to suck on to look at to hold to tap on throughout the morning throughout the day um, little things like that you might have them make fetu with hand paint and they might put their hand in the paint on a piece of paper and uh, that might be the fetu that you send home to their whanau. You might be um, having, well, kai with them is another one, um, singing waiata with them, playing um, waiata to them. There are so many things that translate to any age group and it's not what can we specifically do for this particular age group? It's how do we adapt it so that it's safe for those under two PP. And so one of the things that I always encourage is put our natural resources in front of our PP, in front of our under twos, give them harakeke to play with, to suck on. It's safe. It's fine. Um, they can be playing with harakeke toys. You can get, um, or you can make if you want to, you can make some kono and you can put bells inside and they can be singing along to matariki weata, shaking the bells inside the kono. So those are a number of different things. And I can see that there's other suggestions for three and four. All of these things, everything that I've talked about, 
today can be adapted to any age group. You are the kayako. How do you adapt it to a three and four year old age group? So um, I would just say when we're looking at our under twos, my encourage, my, the thing that I encourage the most is introduce them to Papa Tuanuku, introduce them to our natural resources, introduce them to our waiata. Um, all of those things are really accessible. When we're getting a little bit older, three and four, my pepe is already singing Matariki Waiata. She's making her Matariki wishing tree. She's, you know, drawing her fetu. Um, so that's at three years old. Every single thing can be adapted to that particular age group that you need it to be. Take them with you when you're going to count your tuna. Um, our, question, our second question was, are there adaptations for children with special needs? I guess for me, um, I'm not qualified specifically to talk about mm. children with special needs, but I have the same answer. And that's because I have worked with tamariki who have varying needs, varying abilities, and all of them relate or have related in one form or another with waiata. Music therapy has been absolutely wonderful for some of the tamariki and my whanau who have special needs, and they can always participate in, in dancing and singing and music with the guitar. Um, again, using those um, natural resources that are safe, having those power shells, having them concentrate on finding the colours within the power shells. There are lots of different things that you can adapt to cater to those with varying needs and abilities. It's, it's an, it's an interesting one has just popped up. Do we need to be aware in, of any tikanga with haraki? in the classroom and maybe um Tita or Virginia you might want to add on to after Keanu says something about that one because maybe that's what I think sometimes in our classroom some of our kayako mark um are really worried about specific tikanga in the classroom when doing certain celebrations so um oh. if you guys like to share any of those Oh, yeah, kia ora. Um, some of the things that we do uh, and we the things we don't do is when you're using harakeke, make sure that it's not spread out all over the place where people are walking over it. Um, the other thing is when you have finished with all your um, old bits, you must wrap them up and return them back to the whenua where you got them from. So just put them back into the, um, underneath the harakeke where you got them from, um, or in a space, in, and have a space in your kura, in your school, where you would return that all the time so that it's not just thrown in the rubbish bin. It should never be thrown in the rubbish bin, ever. And do not burn it. Please do not burn it. That's just my um, whakaro. I don't burn it. We wrap it up tie it all in a bundle and then we put it back into the uh, on top of the in under the harakeke where we got it from or in a part of um a garden where you don't play where it's not a play space um and yeah and just teach your children not to throw it around um it's a lot of common sense stuff that we it's the same kind of tikanga that you would use when you're using any uh rawimi any um resources in your same with wool i know my nanny was a knitter um, he, he nati porau, no nati porau ia. She was a knitter and a crochet and we, you know, you never walked over the wall. You never walked over anything that was unfinished. Otherwise, it would never get finished. That's what she taught me. You never walked over anything you were doing that was in the process of being made. Um, and the same with wool, the same tikanga. She taught me that as a wee one. Um, so, yeah, that's some of the things I know. Um, Tera would probably have some ideas as well, as everybody in this um, forum will. Um, yeah. So, kia ora. Um, that's a great question about um, te, te tiaki i te harakeke. Um, we would rather prefer to sit at the harakeke plant. Um, so that we can show the Bano where the three mains are, what they look like, show our babies so they can touch it and feel it. Um, some of our harakeke plants are, are really um, made for, are used for pipu. <laughs> so it's knowing the difference of which ones you can use for certain things. Like um, there's a there's a finer harakeke to make putti putti, and then there's a, 
um, there's a tougher harakeke plant that's made for pupu that, you know, it's knowing those things as well. But um, like I said to, um, for our challenge for us as um, Kayako Māori is to help our whanau understand that, what the differences are with the harakeke. Um, however, classrooms are different to, to whare kōhanga. Um, and what I mean by that is that whare kōhanga is just one big massive space <laughs> and there isn't a particular place for, for this or the only particular that we do have is wahikai. Um, so knowing knowing how to keep things separate um, and um, to support what Virginia said uh, that um, people shouldn't be walking over regardless of how old our babies are, walking over any kind of um, mahi Māori with the, with the harakeke. So, yeah, I agree with that. Nami. Um, aroha mai. I just wanted to add another tikanga in there, which is karakia. And um, karakia is something that we do with any rawimi, that we connect any resources that we collect from our taiao, from our environment. And the karakia, um, some people sort of go, you know, what is what is the karakia? And they sort of want a written karakia to have the exact words of the karakia. But really, when we go in to collect resources, the karakia that we share are a karakia of thanks. And it's thanking Papatuanuku, thanking Tani Mahuta, thanking Tangaroa, Hine Moana, whoever it is that we're collecting resources from, thanking them for, for those resources and acknowledging that. And um, as has been said, returning, when we finish with them, returning those resources um, back to the taiao, back to the environment. And so... There are karakia that you can learn and that you can source online and that you can get from different books um, if you wanted specific karakia. However, one of the key things if, um, if you don't have access to those resources is to ensure that before you're collecting those resources, you offer your thanks. You give thanks. And then when you're making what you're making with them, you give thanks as well. And it really is about respect. You know, all of the, the tikanga that we have is about respecting all of those resources that um, we collect and that we use. Hi. Kia ora. Hi. Um, Kia ora. Yeah, just to tell you about your children, Kian, or Motaku here, fire. Hi, Kian. Just when a lot of people ask, oh, you know, karakia, is that because we have to, you know, um, karakia is also recognition of thanking the Papa Tuan, thanking Nga Atua, Nga Kaitiaki, which is Papa Tuanuku, her Tama for these things, but also recognising that, yeah, we are using this thing, but we know that we are just part of the connection between us and Papa Tuan. Look, it's not about saying, oh, holy God, da, da, da. Um, more talking here for that. I didn't mean to disrespect anybody with that, but what I'm saying is that a lot of people ask, oh, so with karakia, is that because, you know, God's the greatest or is Papa Tuanuku the greatest? And um, of course she is, don't get me wrong, but it's also <laughs> about recognising that, even, we use this because you gave this to us, fire. But we do understand that without you, we are nothing. Hey, we are just a part of the system. So it's remembering, and that's that respect of. Um, and it's not about um, how um, just. Um, it's just about that understanding of we are part of this connection, and we are not the be and end all. Even though we are human, we are not the be and end all of this world. Without Papa Tuanuku, we can't exist. And that's what Karakia is about, is that recognition of um of Faka Papa. Oh. I don't have my coat, so you most probably can see me, but I can't see a thing. And uh, and I'm just like just sort of looking at winding up our 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 time. And um no, oh, there I go. I'm back. Um and I would love to really carry on with our um, conversation, but I've just been given that. <laughs> and I'd really like to, at this particular time, um, thank you, Kian, and it'll be really nice and I hope to see if you're coming to our uh, Te Kahui Fetu this year. It'd be really great that if you attended, because that was just really awesome. And um, uh, Akuhoa, kia ora mō tēnā, whakawhatai mō tēnā, 
ki te tautoko he korero i tēnei ahi ahi. And, yeah, thank you very much. And thank you for all those people that have come on to listen for this afternoon. Um, thank you very much. And I'm just going to close off. Um, no, it's just a kind of care, but uh, one of um, Fina Cooper's Koreros, one of her one of her famous proverbs. So I'd just like to end off with that. But yeah, once again, ahi ahi. And you know, that's one word I decided that this year for Matariki, my class would learn the kupu whakapitai. We give thanks. It is something that we don't use. And it was quite interesting because all our Pacifica children use whaifatai for everything. So thank you. So to give thanks, whakapitai is a kupu. So I'll just um, end of our session. Take care of our children. Take care of what they hear. Take care of what they feel for how the children grow. So will they shape Aotearoa. Na Dame Fina Cooper. Kira Mutina. Thank you all for sharing.